Hey, Blunty, how do you like the new DLC? What do you think of the new DLC? I'm going to tell you what I think about the new DLC. Hello again, I am Blunty. This is a spoiler-free review of the new Pokemon DLC, the Isle of Armor, or as I've been calling it, the Isle of Amor, because... I like wordplay. For those of you who are wondering if it's worth the money, and for those of you who are just wondering what your old YouTube pal Blunty thinks of it, here we are. And I'll be doing this, again, spoiler free, unless of course you consider seeing what some of the map looks like and seeing a few of the previously unavailable Pokemon it brings back into the game. When I say spoiler free, I mean there's no story stuff going to be spoiled here for you. The story itself is somewhat on par with the post credits story of previous games, like the post credit part of the base Pokemon Sword and Shield game, or perhaps closer to the post-game Delta chapter of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I streamed it today for about five and a half hours. It took about three to four hours of that to go through the story arc. I wasn't rushing, but I did have a team pretty much prepared. If you're rushing through it, you could probably do it in as little as two, maybe, maybe less. But I would guess for most people, sort of three to four to five hours, if you've got an established level appropriate team coming in there, will be about right. And while most people will of course be playing this as a post-game experience, you can actually access travel to the new island from a location that is set even before the first gym in the main game. So not all players will necessarily be doing this with fully leveled teams at all. For that reason, the level of the wild Pokemon and trainer Pokemon you'll face is scaled based on how many gym badges you have. Which is a pretty sensible way to go about it, if you ask me. So you can, in theory, begin in on this ancillary story chapter at any point throughout a normal playthrough. There's only a few actual trainer battles on the island. Most of the story content revolves around mini quests and character stuff and leveling up the special Pokemon you get along the way, but what battles and gym style challenges there are were pretty fun, and as decent challenges as it expects from this game in this generation. That is to say, not terribly difficult, Pokemon games have been getting easier and easier and easier for many years now. For a mildly experienced player, it won't be that much of a challenge, but as long as you're not deliberately overleveled, it'll provide enough of a challenge to be amusing at least. After the story content itself, you'll get the usual stuff to do, more newly added Pokemon to hunt, catch and collect on the new Pokedex chase, and of course shiny hunting. The map is quite nice, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies to explore, lots of different biomes around, lots of different paths and lots of hidden items. Of the new map, it's entirely wild area style, so the instant you arrive you can go wherever the hell you like, and there's no locked off camera or single pathing like you'll find in the towns and standard areas of the main game. Feels quite freeing, actually. In fact, when I arrived on the new island, I spent an hour just exploring and dicking about before I even triggered the first parts of the core story. That's pretty refreshing for a Pokemon game, actually. There's also a few mini quests, one of which is a kind of mild form of the Korok seed hunt from Breath of the Wild, which sees you hunting down 150 diglets across the island who've buried themselves around the map. And there's a couple more highly specific battle challenge modes as well to keep you busy. And the map in general is a lot more interesting than the standard wild areas of the core game. Much more variety in environment, both in biome and look and feel, and of course the Pokemon available there. All in all, I'm not terribly disappointed. It's the first of two DLC expansions, and it was pretty much in line with expectations in the context of what this game series and this generation of game uh, provide. It's not great value by general DLC standards as far as time versus content versus money goes, at least by comparison to many other game properties out there with DLC packs, but I'd call it good enough. It doesn't feel especially lazy or tossed together just to make a buck. There was the usual character and charm you'd expect from this generation of game. The same low-level challenge, of course, that we talked about. Unfortunately, they didn't take the opportunity to fine-tune performance or make better assets. Uh, a lot of the textures still look like muddy garbage, frankly, and a lot of the models would look quite at home on a Nintendo 64 game. So some of the main criticisms about how this game looks still stand. And the performance still tanks sometimes. I saw a lot of frame rate hitches and some flat out severe slowdown at times when online and moving into more complex areas like the forested area. It was terrible and frankly not good enough from a game series of this size from a developer of this much experience. All in all, I wasn't blown away, but I wasn't let down either. 
At the end of the day, if both DLC packs represent around this level of new content and map area and size and things to do, etc, 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 I don't feel any buyer's remorse. Because, of course, you are forced to buy both packs at the same time for one price. You can't buy them separately. Thanks for that, Game Freak. Mm. But frankly, I'm quite happy to have more reasons to come back to this game and chill out with it and have fresh things to do. So yeah, the cynical view might call it a middling at best. But to the Pokemon fan, it's adequate enough for the series' very first steps into DLC content at all. I doubt many people will call this fantastic. A lot of people will, of course, jump back on the Game Freak hater wagon because, well, it's the internet, that's what people do. But I'm on the middle road. Do I wish it had been more and better? Yeah, <laughs> sure do. Did I expect more and better? No, no, not, not really, no. So I'm getting out of it what I'd anticipated. And I think that helps. It's nothing more and nothing less than just a bit more of Sword and Shield. And in that context, it's fine. Just fine, but fine. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I hope this has been a helpful little insight and helped you make a decision about whether or not you should bother investing in this DLC content. And for those of you who just came here for my opinion, well, now you have it. It's fine. Just fine. Which, as sad as it may seem, is pretty much what we can expect from Game Freak, isn't it? Now, I tell you, I would love to see another developer take a real hard crack at a mainline series Pokemon RPG. Can you imagine? What developer would you like to... There's, there's a question. There's a question for the day. What developer would you like to see do a mainline core RPG series Pokemon game? <laughs> but thanks for watching. Thanks, as always, to the Patreon people. I love what you do for me. Thank you ever so much. You are brilliant. To everyone else, uh, have you subscribed, liked, ring the bell, etc, etc, etc. You know the drill by now, don't you? Thanks for watching. I'm Blunty. I'll catch you next time.